world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel. This is going to be episode 178 of my Poker Vlog. It's been a few weeks since my last video. That's mostly because I was on vacation, went on a cruise. Shout out to the two guys who recognized me on the boat. Always fun to beat viewers from other places and get to talk to them. But since we are back to playing poker, we're going to get right into rolling the tape. We buy into this game for $800, and our first hand dealt will be a hand of note. Just sat down, middle position player opens at $20, we have black pocket 10s. Probably should be 3-betting this a decent percentage of the time, but this is literally the first hand dealt, so we're just going to call this one, get the play in position, and see what develops. The big blind size of call, so we end up going three ways to a flop of king seven four with two spades. Board that's pretty neutral. My opponent has the best kings in range, but I have sevens and fours a lot more often than he does. So when he continues for $25, I think it's pretty standard to just call this one and see what my opponent wants to do on the turn. Big blind decides to fold, so we are heads up to a turn, which is the queen of diamonds. And now my opponent checks to me. If my opponent had a king, I actually expect him to keep betting here, get value from flush draws, protection against a scary ace that comes. So when he checks to me, I think he's weighted more towards ace high holdings, maybe flush draws here and there, but not really top pair. So I think throwing out a bet here myself gets a lot accomplished. Sometimes if my opponent had like jacks, tens, eights, things like that, he might just fold. Additionally, if my opponent has two spades, he's probably gonna call and be behind. So we throw out a bet of $85. My opponent decides to make Make the call heads up to a river card which is the five of spades not my favorite for obvious reasons i think my opponent has a flush at least some of the time so looking for a check back which after my opponent tanks for like 45 seconds he decides to just lead for 225 do have the ten of spades so i block some of the draws but this lead here to me is either an ace high flush or block betting with a king i lose to both of those holdings I guess I could turn my 10 of spades into a bluff at least some of the time, but definitely not going to be this time. I let it go, and we will never know if my opponent had it or not. Luckily, I win two less notable pots before. I look down at jack 10 of hearts and raise to $30. After one limp, the under the gun straddler calls and the limper folds, so we end up going heads up to a flop of ace 7 three with two diamonds and one heart all right we got the best aces in range so we're just gonna see bet hopefully my opponent just folds all his junk and even hands that are beating me like king queen king jack so i bet 35 dollars my opponent does not give it up he calls the 35 less than ideal i suppose any pocket pair probably wouldn't give up yet so hoping to turn a bunch of equity and the nine of clubs gives us a little bit of equity we have a gut shot we have jack high if it was a heart, we probably just check and try to realize some equity. But since we're drawing to simply four outs to what I think is the best hand, we're going to throw out a second barrel. Hopefully this one gets the weakest aces in his range to fold, like ace five, maybe ace 10, ace jack some of the time, as I have all the better aces in range. So I throw out a second barrel of $60, and my opponent snap rips it in my face. All right, the bet was about $200, and we really can't call this one. Suppose my opponent had the better hand on this one. Following that, I look down at ace jack of clubs in the cutoff. With one limp, I raise to $30. The button and the small blind side to call, so we're three ways to a flop of 933 with two diamonds. Although this board doesn't help my hand at all, it shouldn't really connect to my opponents all too often. Since I have all the over pairs in range, I think I'm going to throw out a bet here and get all my opponents pure misses to fold so i bet 30 dollars pretty small here i don't think i have to go too big because if my opponent had like sixes or sevens they're probably just calling a street and we waste more money when we choose a bigger sizing so this small 30 dollar bet both players fold and this shows just how aggression can win some pots sometimes following that when it folds all the way to me in the big blind with ace seven off suit I'm going to raise to $20. There's a straddle out there. So I'm not sure if you can chop at derby lanes, but I'm not going to ask. I'm just going to play like you cannot when it's a three blind game. $20 makes the straddler call and we end up going heads up to a flop of 
10, 9, 6 rainbow. So we have a gut shot, seems pretty good. But I do think this board interacts better with a caller's range than a razor's range. So I'm not going to try to rep a bluff on this one. I'm going to just check it, see what my opponent wants to do. When I check my opponent bets $25. Well, I have a gut shot. I have an over. I'm not folding. When I call it $25, we turned the ace of spades. So now we're absolutely never folding. We just turned pretty much the premium. If I check my opponent bets, I'm probably going to check raise trying to get value against a random 10 maybe nine seven and nine eight as well but when i check my opponent checks it back the river is the seven of diamond so we hit a two pair but there's a four liner out there suppose here you can go either way between betting and checking i decide to check to my opponent who bets 25 dollars. pretty happy to just call here think i'm losing some of the time but not this time my opponent had 10 seven so they also were at a worse two pair and we made a bit of value could have gotten some more but give me the hundred bucks we didn't bet we could spend all day arguing whether we bet or not. Give me the hundred bucks. Somewhat of a dicey board to try it on. Next interesting hand. We look down at the same two black tens from the first hand. We feel pretty good about this. When I'm under the gun, I raise to $20. The cutoff calls before the big blind raises to 100. I'm not folding tens. I think they function pretty well as a set mine. Get to play in position. If we flop a set, my opponent's 1500 deep. We can take pretty much everything from him. So when Strather folds, I'm making the call. Caught off things for a long time, counts out the hunter, and then decides to fold. Kind of weird. All right, dealer, let's see. A 10 on this flop. Ace, 9, 8 with two clubs is not going to do it. I do have three to a straight flush and only one over card, so it's not the worst. But if my opponent had even a wide three betting range, it includes hands like Ace, 10, Ace, Jack, Ace, Queen, off suit. So pretty horrendous for pocket 10 specifically. I'm somewhat surprised to see my opponent check. I'm pretty happy to see a free turn card. Six, seven, jack, club, 10. A lot of good ones for me. Additionally, when my opponent checks to me, I think he sometimes has pocket kings and pocket queens here. So probably going to take it away on a lot of turn cards. However, the king of diamonds is just not one of them. My opponent had pocket kings. He just binked the basically nuts where he's never folding. If he has ace king and went for kind of a sneaky check on the flop, he's also just never folding. And my opponent bets $200. Well, this tens adventure is probably over. Don't really see how I can continue here. We let it go. Hopefully we can win some back. We do accomplish that before the next hand of note. With a button straddle to $12, I'm in the big blind with ace queen of spades. I raise to $35. Folds all the way to the button who makes the call. So we are heads up to a flop of queen eight four with two hearts and one spade. So pretty phenomenal board. Top pair, good kicker. We even have a backdoor flush draw in case we need it. This is definitely going to be a bet for me. I bet $35. The button's not giving up yet. He makes the call. Turn, not great. It's the four of diamonds. Much better for my opponent than me. So I decide to check. And my opponent goes really big with it, $125. Well, I didn't check ace-queen on this board to fold to a bet. I don't care how much time and money it costs you to defend me. So we're going to call this, reevaluate on the t river, hope it's a safe one. When I call, the river is the deuce of hearts. Pretty horrible river card. The obvious flush draw gets there. When I checked my opponent, he bets $200. This opponent had been caught bluffing before. You must be full of baloney. Hmm. A lot of it. Huh. He'd make a $200 river bet and just say you're good in muck. Seen it a few times. So we are definitely not folding here. My opponent could have like 9, 10, 10 jack. Worse queens would play the same way. Maybe he turns an 8 into a bluff as well as like pocket fives and random other assorted pocket pairs. So I call pretty quickly and my opponent has 10 four of clubs. Well, can't beat that one. Must be nice to hit that turn card and get paid off by probably the worst player at the table. So at this time, I top up into the game for 1800 and we got some work to do. And what better hand to get some work done than with Queen Jack of Hearts. With one limp, I raise to $30. The big blind straddler and limper decide to call, so we end up going four ways to a flop of King Jack 3, 2 diamonds, 1 heart. When it checks to me, I'm going to bet here, middle pair, backdoor heart draw, backdoor straight draw. Would love to thin the field, don't want too many players seeing the turn card. So when everyone checks to me, I throw out about a half pot size bet of $55, which thins almost no one. Only one player decides to fold, the other two call. Less than ideal, hopefully we hit a jack or a queen on the turn. But the turn is the nine of hearts. Definitely above average, a ten of hearts gives me a straight flush. 
give me a high hand bonus here. With both my opponents checked to me, I really don't see myself getting two opponents to fold here. If I get check raised from the elusive queen 10 or king x or 9 10 of diamonds, would put me in an absolutely miserable spot. So this is going to be one of the few times where I take a massive draw and just try to realize my equity. Usually play big draws very aggressively against two players. I guess I'm just going to try to hit this time. And when I check, hit I do not. Eight of clubs. Dang it. On the bright side, both hearts and diamonds miss, so I could have the best hand at least a small portion of the time. However, the big blind throws out a bet of $125. Middle position player folds, and I don't really think I can call with just a pair of jacks and a four-liner on board. So we let this one go and lose another one. All right, premiums aren't working. Let's try king seven of clubs. I'm in the $6 under the gun straddle position. With one limp, the button makes it $20. The small blind calls. I'm definitely going to call for $20 and the limper calls as well. So we end up going four ways to a flop of seven, six, three rainbow with one club. Flop top pair, good kicker. Ironically, this board should be pretty good for my range. I have six, seven, all the sets, four, five. All that stuff is going to smack the straddler when they're calling for only $20. This is going to be a hand where I think I have free reign to play very aggressively. Thought about leading, honestly, but I pretty much never have leads. So we're going to go for a check and hopefully a check raise. When it checks all the way to the button, he bets $25. There's one caller. I'm going to bump this up. We make it $110. I am very surprised to see a late position player cold call. And then the button and the small blind decide to fold. So we're going heads up to the turn against the player. I'm most unsure about his range specifically. So really hoping to turn a club where I can keep applying the pressure. But we turn the king of diamonds. Oh, wow. Oh, thank God. Thank you so much. I got to get you a gift or something. Goofy two pair beats six, seven, six, three, all that stuff. So we're going to keep betting when we turn top two pair. I bet $175 and my opponent does not think too long before calling. Again, a little bit unsure of what hands he can even have here because he did limp call 20 pre and then call a $110 check raise on the flop. Not very standard to say the least. The river is the eight of clubs. I decided to check to see what my opponent wants to do. If my opponent had four or five, he already had a straight, so this doesn't affect things too much. Maybe eight, nine specifically turn their hand into a bluff. I do believe pocket eights might play the exact same way. Call with an overpair, not really want to give up on a turn that shouldn't affect things too much. And then just bink a set would be pretty gross. But when I check to my opponent, he takes for a little bit and then checks it back. I just flip over my hand and my opponent takes a second look at his cards, look at my hand before eventually throwing his hand into the middle. Hindsight, I think I definitely need to go for value on this river, but I did think it was possible my opponent turned backdoor diamonds and would turn hands like 7-5, 5 into bluffs, but not the case this time. We win and that's probably the biggest pot of the vlog so far. The one good thing about the last hand is it gives us a very strong image. So when I look down at King Queen of Hearts, with a button straddle, I'm in the big blind. I raised to $30. Two middle position players and the button call. So we end up going four ways to a flop, which comes eight, seven, five, two hearts. Two overs and a flush draw. We have a ton of hand on this board, but this board does not connect with my pre-flop raising range in general. Much better for my opponents. So I think I kind of have to check here and not throw out a C bet. When the button throws out $50, I'm definitely not folding. Could raise, but he definitely has all the goofy two pairs and... I guess like 10-4 suited at some times. When we make the call, the turn is the Jack of Clubs. Wrong face card, no pair. But we're going to check to our opponent, see what he wants to do. This is a card where I think I could raise when bet to rep all the best jacks, rep 9-10, raise with ace, x of hearts, or clubs as bluffs. But my opponent checks it back. The river is the eight of clubs. Quite dicey and deep. Backdoor clubs get there. The top card tripped up, and I'm first to act with king high. Since my opponent will call bets with third pair, he definitely can bet himself with second and third pair. And if he has a seven, a five, maybe middling pocket pair, he will hate seeing a bet on this river. If he has an eight, I think it plays the same way. Bets flop, checks turn. And now when I bet, I'm going to learn about his eight real quick. Additionally, my hand does not block ace X of hearts specifically. So there are some stronger flush draws that technically have me pipped that we can't let see a river for free. So we decide to load up... It was either that or get my hair highlighted. $150, try to make it look like an eight. 
try to make it look like I made a flush, have a jack, one of the above. Last hand I played, I had a premium. Hope he thinks that I have a premium made hand again. And for the $150, I make a believer out of him and we get a bluff through. Felt really good in this spot. So good, I decided to play king queen again, this time off suit. In the plus one position with a button straddle, I raised to $40 after one limp from the small blind. The small blind is the only caller, so we're heads up to a flop of ace, seven, seven. We have nut, no pair. My opponent checks to me. I think I just want to get closer to showdown on this one. If I had an ace, I'd probably check this board a decent amount of the time, losing to all sevens. Not worried about too many runouts being well ahead or well behind. So king queen is going to function the same way. When the turn is the queen of diamonds, my opponent bets $75. Well, I turn second payer best kicker. I guess I beat all worse queens. My opponent could have backdoor diamonds. Maybe he's bluffing with like 10 jack. Either way, we're calling this one, seeing what develops. And the river is the deuce of diamonds. Flush seems to always get there on this day. Luckily, my opponent checks to me. I check it back, show my cards, and he has pocket threes. So lower pocket pair is not going to be good. We take one down, which brings us to the next hand of note. I'm on the button. I straddle to $12. And with a small blind and a middle player limbs, a late position player raised to $35. King Jack offsuit, don't think it's good enough to three bet, but definitely strong enough to call. I make the call and the other two players that limp decide to fold. So we are heads up to a flop, which comes Jack 8, 8, two spades and a club. We do have the King of Spades, so that's nice. We have some backdoor flush equity. We have top pair. Definitely calling a bet if my opponent bets, but he checks it to me. I think my opponent has a lot of absolute air here a lot of the time, so I want to keep him in the hand. Get some value on later streets. I check it back. Turn is the Jack of Diamonds. Well, that's a pretty phenomenal turn card. Even better, my opponent bets $75. Well, hopefully he's turning like spades into a bluff. Maybe he's turning 910 into a bluff. Hopefully he just doesn't have another Jack and we're chopping, but definitely want to give him the opportunity to keep betting if he's bluffing. So I make the call. And the river is the Three of Clubs. Expecting my opponent to check a lot, but he puts in $150. One of the best things to see is to sit there with technically the second nuts. We lose to pocket eights, but a very strong hand and have your opponent bet into you. Definitely going to raise here, not go full 3x. I don't really think my opponent has any hand here all too often. I don't even think pocket tens would call a raise. So we're going to raise really small, try to get crying calls out of those middling pocket pairs. I make it $400. And my opponent snap calls. Well, I guess we're chopping for a snap call. He obviously has a jack. But no, he's got ace eight. So bottom end of the full house. We got the top end. We win a massive pot. Full house over full house. What a lucky turn card for me. The heater's going to continue. When an early push player raised to $20, I'm in the cutoff with ace king of clubs. I raised to $75. The middle push player is the only caller. We're heads up to a flop. Comes eight high. Goes check, check. Turn, board still 8 high, check, check. River, board, pair, still 8 high, check, check. He doesn't look like he wants to show. I show ace-king high, and we win a 3-bet pot with ace high. Seems reasonable. Next interesting hand. I looked down at pocket jacks from the cutoff. I raised to $20. The small blind 3 bets to 80, and this opponent had been very, very tight in the session. Like, extremely tight. Not going to 4-bet jacks, especially against this player. I'm going to make the call, though. Not going to fold them. And the flop is king queen five rainbow when my opponent checks to me i actually think this person has aces a lot of the time and i actually think i can get aces specifically to fold facing multiple bets i think i have kings and queens play the same way especially thinking about how tight this player is and i think ace is going to hate this board losing to king queen specifically as well they're just not going to have a good time if i throw a lot of money in there so i start with a bet of 115 dollars not really expecting to win this on the flop, but prepared to go the distance until the turn card is the Ace of Hearts. Pretty devastating card to see. Hate it so much. Even worse, my opponent leads for $200. I mean, I just thought they had Aces the whole time. That's how tight they were, but I, I just don't see a way I could turn this into a win anymore. So I, I sheepishly just fold to a turn lead and that's going to make Jax a loser on this one when all three over cards find their way onto the board. I make a little bit back winning two small ones. And like I said, we're in the game for 1800. We have about 1800 in front of us. So start off well in the hole, came back to break even, feels good. 
before we get to a final hand of nodes. In this one, I'm in the cutoff. I have pocket queens with one limp. I raised to $30. The small blind plus the limper call. We are three ways to a flop. Jack eight five with two clubs is the flop. This time we have no over cards to our pocket pair. So when it checks me, we're gonna throw out a small bet here. Get value from any Jack, two clubs, six, seven, nine, ten, all that stuff. $30 will be the wager and both players decide to call. So not really want to see this multi-way. I think there's a lot of dangerous turn cards. Six of diamonds is one of the safer ones. Nine, seven being the only real straight that completed here. Don't expect it all too often. Don't really expect my opponent to have two pair on this board specifically all too often either. So I'm going to throw in a second barrel, get value from the jack, the clubs, the nine, 10, six, seven might stick around for another one as well. We size up here to $115. On this bet, the small blind calls very quickly. The middle position player thinks for a little bit, then calls as well. Less than ideal. Luckily for us, the river is the queen of hearts. We bink top set. If my opponent ever had a random two pair, we just crushed them. We beat all other sets, and we are definitely going to bet this river card. However, we don't get the chance when the middle position player just leads for 350. I almost snap call this one. Hmm. Well, have you thought about, I don't know not doing that i had seen this opponent do some creative bluffs and this would be a card i expect to bluff a lot of the time if my opponent had queen jack specifically he would probably throw out a bet here for value if he had queen x of clubs he might throw out a bet here as that's the only queen that's available if my opponent had jack 10 jack 9 queen 10 queen 9 ace x of clubs any two clubs plenty of bluff combinations he also could be value betting pocket five sixes eights and jacks at least some of the time with my opponent's propensity to bluff, although I wasn't able to capture it against me specifically, I swear it was happening, and since I beat so many value hands, I'm definitely going to call this one. I think I'm good about 50% of the time, and even as I call, I just say 9-10 is good, sir, and this time he does indeed have the 9-10. So, kind of a frustrating river card, pretty much a 2-hour to 1 I'm never folding for. You know, if a 7 comes, I could pretty happily get away from it, but not when it's a queen. So, should have left when this pitcher was taken. Instead, I played one more hand. It means I'm into the game for $1,800, out of the game for $1,278, which is a loss of $522 across six hours, meaning that equals $87 an hour or 29 big blinds an hour. Yeah, I suppose the main takeaway from this video is large pot size and over pot size leads on the river when you don't have the betting lead is typically always nutted. It's very hard for an opponent to have a hand that is not super strong in this situation. Unfortunately for me on this one specifically, I beat some nutted hands, some two pairs, some other sets. Even though the lead is super strong, sometimes you're just so high up in your range, you just have to call anyway. Either way, hope someone can learn from that last hand and hopefully not make the mistakes I do. I have another fun video coming up, this one from Coconut Creek. We are on the traveling trail. Thank you for watching. I will see you on the next one.